we're going to be doing an alignment on the E39. I just got those new Federal tires put on and I want to get an alignment done so that I don't wear those tires wrong. Well, yes, you can go to an alignment shop and get this done for anywhere from $100 to $200 depending on how much they want to price gouge you. It's really not that difficult to do it at home and doing an alignment on the E39 is actually really simple. The only things you can adjust is front and rear toe and rear camber. So it's pretty easy to do it at home. The only thing you're adjusting is eccentric bolts and tie rod ends. These are the tools that are specific to the alignment, not the tools that are specific to adjusting parts in the car, because whatever car you have, whether it is an E39 or a Nissan or a Ford or a Chevy or whatever you've got, your places and adjustments and socket sizes are all going to be different. You're going to need some bungee cords, two tape measures, a camber gauge. I'm going to show you how I made this one, but you can buy one or get something different. I've got two 30 inch long pieces of aluminum square stock and a longer four foot level. You're also going to need something to help level out your car. So you can see I've got two wood shims up there at the top of the shot. I've got one on the right and two on the left because my garage slopes from the center out and from the back towards the front. So I need two on the front left tire. I need one on the front right and one on the rear left. And that'll get the car almost 100% level. Ideally for the E39, you want to do this with a full gas tank. Different cars have different recommendations. Some want a full tank, some want a half tank. Never do it with less than half a tank. It's really not going to make a humongous difference, but you want to have a realistic representation of what your car is going to be like on the road. If you're doing a track alignment, you want to get in the seat or put some weight in the seat or have your wife or whoever, something so that you can simulate your weight because in a track type situation, you want everything to be as precise as possible. There's another way that you can do this alignment you can do what's called a string alignment and I will show you how to do that. The reason your string alignment is good is it gives external markers to the car. The way we measure toe is from the front edge of each wheel and the back edge of each wheel. If they're exactly the same then they are parallel and they have zero toe. The problem is you can have zero toe like this where they're both facing forward but you would get the same measurements if they were both leaned the same way to the left or to the right. So while they're to the right, they're the same exact way to the right. So it's going to be, you know, four inches between these tips of my fingers and four inches in the back. What we want is them to be perfectly straight. They can also be like this, where this wheel's cock and this one is forward. So you're always going to have some toe out, which is bad. You want toe in if we can get it, which on most cars you should be able to unless something's terribly wrong. So the external measurements of the car, if you set up a perfect rectangle around your car with the string, that way you can measure from that and you're always going to have nice right angles to work with. What you can also do is pick a center point on your vehicle somewhere underneath your engine you can measure off of and then measure from that center point to the front edge of each wheel, center point to the rear edge of each wheel, and then you know if they're facing left, right, center or wherever. So I'm going to back the E39 into the garage and we're going to get set up and I'll show you some of the tools in a little bit more detail. Here is the DIY camber gauge that I made. All you're going to need is an aluminum angle, some nut certs or the ability to tap the aluminum, two long bolts that are identical lengths. So this camber gauge works off the principles that you learned in trigonometry in high school. You're going to place each of the bolts up against the lip of your rim. You're going to adjust one of the bolts so so it is all the way out and you're going to use the other bolt to make it level. So whether you have positive or negative camber, you're going to use the bolts to make it perfectly level. You're going to take the difference between each bolt and that difference is side B on your triangle. Side A on your triangle is the distance between the two bolts. So whether you have an 18 inch rim, 15 inch, whatever, and you are then solving for a small angle. So if you have two centimeters of difference in between the heights on the two bolts, to get level. You have a 19 inch rim. You're going to have somewhere in the neighborhood of two degrees of negative camber. That's not exact. You'll have to put that in the calculator, but that's how it works. It'll make a little bit more sense on the car. And of course, I'll have that other video showing you exactly how I made this.
So now that the car is in the garage, I'm gonna make sure that all four of my tires have the same exact pressure. You do not want separate pressures. You want everything to be exactly perfect. Remove as many variables as you possibly can. And then we'll start working on checking our alignment. So I've already measured the camber of this wheel. So I already know what the value is. I'm just gonna show y'all how I did it. What you're gonna do is this bolt on the top is going to be advanced all the way and then the jam nut tightened because I'm expecting negative camber. I'm gonna make sure that the top and bottom are perfectly centered on the wheel and straight up and down. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna try and make this bubble level go to the center. So you can see when I move out or in, it adjusts the bubble level. So what I need to do, let's see. So it needs to go in just a little bit further. And now the bubble level is in the center of the level. So this one is much shorter than this one. So I know I have negative camber. So I'm gonna measure how long this one is at the bottom, how long this one is at the top. The difference is a triangle from here to here, here, and then back down. And the angle at this bottom part right here, that's what's gonna be my camber number. Now I know that if I do the math on this, it's gonna come out to 2.6 degrees of negative camber, which believe it or not, is only barely out of spec. Spec on these cars is 1.3 to 2.5 degrees of negative camber, which is way too much. I don't want that much negative camber, so I'm going to try to adjust it to have as little negative camber as I possibly can. Ideally, I want maybe anywhere from one to 1.5 degrees of negative camber in the rear. So we're gonna do that on all four corners. It doesn't really matter on the front because you can't adjust it on these cars, but it's just good to know that maybe there's something damaged or a control or a bushing that's bad. If everything's in spec, you should be okay. Now we're gonna check tow. So the way we're gonna check tow is a little different. I'll get it set up and I'll go over it with you guys. So here's how we're gonna measure tow. I have a piece of aluminum square stock on each side and they're held together by bungee cords just to pull them tight against the tire and keep them in place. So I've got two bungee cords connected in the middle pulling each bar together. Each bar is 30 inches long so they're marked at the 15 inch point and that is what is directly under the center cap of the wheel to make sure that they're even on each side. The rear tape measure is on the actual rear. The front tape measure is two and a half inches back because there's a little splash guard on the front of the wheel arch that blocks the tape measure so it couldn't be all the way at the end. What you're doing is you are checking to make sure how far is it between the front two points, how far is it between the rear two points. Because you wanna make sure that the rear wheels are either zero toe, so perfectly parallel, or ever so slightly towed in. If they're towed in slightly, it's gonna help you track straighter on the interstate and the highway. If they're towed out, it's gonna be really squirrely and wanna wiggle back and forth. The end of each tape measure is taped to the bar on the other side so that I know it's not going to move. You could also have someone hold it if you had someone helping you, but this is really not difficult at all to do by yourself. Now you can see where the string alignment would have the string external to the car and you would measure from the string to the rim on either side. So that way you're gonna know is the rim pointed in, out, or is it neutral? and you can check the other side completely independent of this one. So you'd have a jack stand on each four corners of a car, set up your perfect rectangle with some carpenter squares and measuring and all of that. Then with the car inside of that, you measure to the car. You wanna make sure the car is perfectly squared up from center cap on all four corners and then you can start measuring your wheels to check your toe and all of that. If you wanted, you could also check camber that way. You could adjust the height of your square measuring the tops at each point, the center of the wheel and the bottom and draw your triangle that way. So if I pull each one of them tight, I can see that on the front, right at that two and a half inch mark, I have 70 and a half inches of track width. And on the rear, I have 70 and just a little bit over 5'8", so probably 70 and 11 sixteenths. So that means I have 3 sixteenths of an inch toe in, which is really good. That's right where I want to be. Now I just need to check off the center point to make sure that both wheels aren't pointed to the left or to the right. I want them slightly pointed in together. So I have four jack stands equally placed around the car, one at each corner. They're 82 inches apart and they have twine going in between them. 
So I've got string going all the way up to that front and they are eight and a half inches from each center cap. Not all cars are going to have the same front and rear track width. So the wheels, the center cap of the wheel will not always be the same front and back, but the distance from each rear wheel to the string should be the same and each front wheel to the string should be the same. So I have eight and a half on each side on all four corners. Now it's going to be a lot more difficult to get this perfectly square using string all the way around. If I'd bought two more pieces of the square tube and laid it on the jack stands in front and just did string from tube to tube, that takes a variable out. I know those tubes are always going to be square as long as they're the same distance apart. And I measure two markings along their length. And then I just have to measure from the string to the center cap. So it'd be a little bit easier if I'd bought the extra stuff. It's up to you what you want to buy and how much you want to invest in this. How often are you going to get an alignment done? Things like that. How much room do you have to store all this equipment? So it came out okay. So the toe was correct. So the only thing we're going to have to do on the rear is the camber. The front toe based off the string looked correct. I'm going to double check it with the original method we did by putting the pieces of tubing up against the wheels and then measuring with the two measuring tapes just to double check because I've already got them and it really only takes just a couple minutes to set that up. But right now it's looking like the front is at zero toe. I'd prefer to have toe in, but the car has been driving perfectly fine. Zero toe is not going to have any sort of negative impact on the vehicle. And it's not worth trying to break loose the jam nuts on the tie rod ends and mess with all that just because the car is set at zero toe. We are going to have to address camber on the rear passenger side wheel because it's at negative 2.6 degrees, which is as I said before, almost within spec, I could leave it if I was a non-car person. But because I care about the car, I've got mechanical sympathy, I'm going to try and tuck that wheel in a little bit and see if I can adjust the camber. Once I do that, I am going to have to recheck and make sure that our toe is still the same. I don't want to bring it in with the camber and then mess up the toe. It might toe that wheel in a little bit. We'll have to double check on that. So I'm going to measure the front. I'm not going to show you how to do it. It's the same exact way we did on the back. And then we'll adjust that camber and we'll remeasure it and see what we get. And then hopefully we'll be done. I wanted to end the video with a little bit of a more clear explanation of how the camber gauge works using a triangle in trigonometry. You can see the triangle here on the screen, which I pulled from an E39 form, is labeled with the tool side and the wheel side. So the distance between that side that is labeled tool side is going to the distance between the two pegs. Then taking the difference between those two pegs when they are adjusted to the wheel, you can find the short side. So if one peg is three inches long and one is two and a half inches long, that short side is going to be in half inch long. So using those two sides and the fact that it's a 90 degree triangle, you can calculate any other angle. So we're calculating for the small angle down at the tip, and that is going to be your camber number, usually somewhere between positive and negative three degrees, depending on the vehicle and application. You can see on the left side of the screen, all of the measurements for the E39 with a six cylinder engine. The V8s are gonna be slightly different, and then of course, other vehicles are gonna have totally different values that are recommended by the manual. Manufacturer. And because this is an E39 specific video, I did want to show you how to adjust camber and tow. On the left hand side of the screen, we have the lower control arm with the camber adjustment and that red circle with the centric bolt number 11. The red circle on the right is for your tow adjustment with the centric bolt number 15. It's very easy to adjust camber with the car on the ground. Just approach it from behind and you should be able to get to it very easily. I did not have to adjust tow on my car, so I'm not sure how difficult it is to do it with it on the ground. If you have to jack the car up when you put it back down, roll it back and forth to let the suspension settle before taking your measurements again. Like the other posts, this is from a forum member, so I really appreciate them providing this information to us. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments below hit that subscribe button and i will see you guys next week